Creating your microservice can all be done from the AWS, also known as Amazon Web Services Console. I'm gonna to go to console.aws.amazon.com. And if you haven't signed up with an account, go ahead and do it. You have to give your credit card, but they do have a free tier. If you are too young to have a credit card, get your parents, let them know that you're not gonna expend any money. It's just gonna be the free tier. Go ahead and sign up. I'm gonna sign in. When you get here to Amazon, this is called the Amazon Console, and there are 20 billion <laughs> services that Amazon provides. The only one we care about is Lambda. Lambda is basically taking any function, and I do mean any function that you write in JavaScript or Python or Java or C Sharp, whatever. We're gonna write in JavaScript. To have Amazon run it for you. And you only get charged for when the function runs. We're gonna link this up to something called API Gateway, which gives you a URL that you can actually run your function. So we're gonna create, click create Lambda function, and I'm just gonna say blank. You need to trigger your Lambda. You don't have to, but we're gonna go ahead and do this because it sets up a lot of work for us. Choose API Gateway, gives you a URL for your Lambda function. Call the API YouTube. API, man. Deployment stage doesn't matter. We're just gonna say prod, which is a euphemism or slang term for production. Don't worry about any security for now. Just put open. Don't leave it like this, but we're gonna say open. Hit next. Call this my function, man. And we're gonna choose node 4.3, don't worry about edge for now. And this is your code. It's basically a node module export handler, very similar to an export if you're used to ES6. And this function takes three parameters, an event, which is what triggered this function. Was it an API gateway? Was it somebody dropping a file on a hard drive with Amazon calls on S3? And how does this function run? That's what the context is. So you can ignore this one and only care about the event. In fact, you can ignore all of them you want to, but I highly encourage you to call callback. Amazon know when your function is completed. So it won't sit here and wait and charge you money for resources. Leave that as is for now. For role, for now, just use Lambda basic execution. It comes with every single Amazon account. So the other roles in here, don't worry about them. Just use Lambda basic. It allows you to do basic things basic security. Don't worry about advanced for now. Just hit next and the API gateway will go automatically create one for you and we'll hit create function down here. Take a few seconds and then it'll say green if it successfully worked. Notice that this trigger here is what triggers this function. You can have more triggers if you want, but for now we're just going to say when we hit this URL, it'll run my function, man, the name of your Lambda function. So if we go back to functions, you can see I have a few from playing around. My function man is at the top. So if you click it, you'll go back to your Lambda function. And if you want to see what triggers it, you go to triggers. Now be aware if you have different qualifiers like names such as dev, QA, and prod, you might not see this. <laughs> so just be aware if you don't see anything, click here and verify you're on a different version or a different alias, which it could be tied to. Latest just means whatever the latest version of your code is, everything's immutable so you can upload new code later. We're going to click the code tab and test it out. So if you click test, it'll throw some JSON at it and see if it works, which is this JSON. And test. And you'll notice that it starts and runs and we see hello from Lambda. So that, that's great. So we can run the code using Amazon running our code in the cloud and it prints a string to the screen. But what happens when we actually go to our URL? We click this, it should just work, right? Well, wrong, it says this. The reason for that is that API Gateway expects REST API types of things. So let's go ahead and create a REST API type of things. Change our code here to actually be a response object. This object's gonna have basically three properties. It's gonna have a status code of 200, a body, or what are we actually sending across the wire, which is a result of true and a data of hello from Lambda. Go ahead and convert this JSON to, to a string. Any JavaScript object, you can automatically convert to a string. JSON's built in. There's no libraries important. And headers, we're gonna say, look, we're sending back JSON. So this body, expect it to be JSON as a string. Go ahead and parse it for us if you can. And then finally, we're gonna take this response and send it back. So no error, standard node protocol of sending nothing for the first parameter. I'm gonna do undefined instead of null. And response. So now if we save this, It'll still work if we test it. Wait, it gives you the actual body back, which is great. But let's go ahead and test our API gateway. And there you go. We got a result true data from hello from Lambda. Your microservice consists of the code, which is an AWS function. This function is it. That's it. If you want to make this thousands of light of code, you can. This trigger can be anything. We've made it an API gateway, so we get a unique URL to play with. Currently, the security is open. Anybody can pass anything, which is very dangerous. So we can lock it down. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you create your first microservice on AWS using Lambda functions. You'll only charge when you click test for how long it ran, right? It ran for that, your build for the 100 milliseconds and how many resources it consumed.